Hey Hill City, it is a pleasure and an honor to be with you. I just wanna take a few minutes of your time to share three simple things that have really helped me during these times of uncertainty. I'm not gonna make it too big of a deal, but really I want us to talk about how do we walk through life when, when seasons come to us that we have no control over or no certainty of what's gonna happen tomorrow or how are things gonna unroll or unravel and really just kind of the unknown. I wanna give you a few things that have really, really helped me that have impacted me during this time, really straight from my journal into your heart and into your home. So we're gonna go over three points today. It'll be simple, quick, and easy. So how do we truly face the unknown, uncertainty in times like this? Really, it's three things that I wanna share with you today. And the first one is, I'm gonna start out, I'm actually gonna read three Psalms to you, share some stories with you, and, um, and there might even be a song in here or, or something like that little. So first, we're gonna start out with Psalm 95, three through sevens. Would you do me a favor and just grab your Bible or look online and let's read this scripture together. You ready? All right, Psalm 95, three through seven says, for the Lord is a great God, a great King above all gods. The depths of the earth are in his hands and the mountain peaks are his. The sea is his, he made it. His hands formed the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker for he is our God and we are his people of his pasture, the sheep under his care. You know, whenever I read that scripture, it just kind of stuck out to me when it says that the earth is in his hands, the mountain peaks are his, the seas are his. It just goes to show you the, the greatness, the bigness, the mightiness, if that's words, I don't even know, of God. Do we understand how big our God truly is, that he is the maker and the creator of the heavens and the earth. When we begin to understand that, it kind of reminds me of the song that we used to sing, and I'm sure you may know this song. He's got the whole world in his hands. I'm not a good singer, but you can keep singing it. Do you remember the song? What a great song that is. He's got the whole world in his hands. You heard it in Psalm 95. He's got the whole world in his hands. So number one is, the first thing we need to remember in times of uncertainty, or in times like we're in right now, is he's got the whole world in his hands. Write that down, that's number one. He's got the entire world in his hands. And as I begin to study that song a little bit, where did he's got the whole world in his hands even come from? I was floored at the findings, really, and I love to kind of dig deeper into what things mean and, and all of that. I wanna teach you that this song was born in the fields of the American South. This was actually written by a slave whose name we will never know. When you discover where the song came from, you start to think about how this person experience trauma, suffering, pain, that's unimaginable, things that we could never even wrap our minds around. The unfairness and the torture and the pain is unthinkable. Yet this amazing person that was created by the maker of the heavens and the earth, that had no control over the future, that had no promise of freedom whatsoever, decided that in the middle of the uncertainty, in the middle of the pain, in the middle of the unknown, he or she rests in the fact that God help holds the world in the palm of his hand. So even in the midst of all of this, we can have this understanding. So what I wanna do is just for a moment, our team sang the song and I wanna sing it together. And I don't wanna just sing it as like, He's got the whole world in his hands. Oh, isn't that lovely? 
I want us to sing from the depths of our heart of God, you've got this world in your hands. We will trust you when we don't see. We will trust you when things are painful. We will trust you in the unknown. So let's take a moment right now. God wants to meet you in your living room as you sing this song together with our church family. Let's do it. He's got the heart. You know, any other kind of animal. He's like, why sheep, you know? And we'll go, we'll go through this. But then I thought, well, why don't you use a goat? Like, why don't you use a goat? You know, we go to living trust with our kids, the goat. Like, why don't you use a goat? And I started doing some research. And the reason why, but once I started learning about goat, goats, they are very strong-willed, stubborn. They're leaders, so they don't follow. They just kind of do what they want. They're kind of aggressive. But sheep are gentle in nature. They are tender and caring and submissive. They follow the leader. So 
has made sense to me. You know, Mama Cynthia um, in our church, she would she would share with Zach and I a story about a goat that she had when she was younger, and it makes us laugh so hard. This is like the greatest story of this goat. She had a pet goat once. God love this goat that used to walk only backwards. Like it got confused, so it only walked backwards everywhere that it went. And it didn't follow anybody. They would just walk in circles. She said one time, she didn't know how, but she said it, it went up like the steps and like went high up. She was like, she just pictured it walking. I'm not gonna tell you how. But can you imagine a goat just walking backwards? Goats are they're stubborn. And sometimes they're they just do what they want to do. And they're not like sheep. So I think there's a reason that he said, My sheep, they hear my voice and they know me. We're gonna get we're gonna get into this in a little bit. But first I want you to take a look at the picture of my son Noah when he was first born. As most of you, when, when you have newborns, you get pictures taken. Now I know there's little rings on his finger, but I want you to look at just the image of this picture because this is what I think of whenever the scripture says that no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. Look at Noah in this picture. He's calm, he's peaceful, he's safe in his Father's hands. Those aren't my hands, those are Zach's hands. And you know, that is what, and that is how I see the Father holding us in the palm of his hand. That there is a place of safety and security, even in the chaos, even in the unknown. We can rest in the fact that the Father has us and we can't be snatched out. That no weapon formed against us will prosper. That nothing is going to steal our joy even whenever chaos is going on. That we can be grounded in the Word of God. That we can be strong and courageous in the Father's hands. We don't have to back down. We don't have to be a goat and walk backwards and do our own thing. That we can have a gentle, calm spirit and know and trust that our lives are in the palm of our Father. So with all that said, that takes me right to point number three. Are you guys ready for it? Remember, point number one was he's got the whole world in his hands. Number two is he's got the whole world in his hands, so he's got you. And number three is he is a good shepherd. I want to kind of unpack this for the last few minutes of this message. Because in all of these scriptures, it's linked together the heart of the Father, the world, the greatness of God, and a shepherd and sheep. So I kind of want to tie this all together for you to give you a better understanding because it gave me a better understanding. So I hope it does with you. Now I know shepherd can kind of it used to bring on some like weird, like, what does shepherd mean? Like, does that, like, what does that even mean? You know, can that, can that be a weird statement? Like, I don't want shepherd. Like, let me just unravel this a little bit for you, hopefully to give you a little bit of information. So you kind of know what that means and have a little bit of a better understanding. I want to read Psalm 23. Listen, this scripture, I've been reading it every day. And I haven't moved on from it just because there is so much depth and power to one scripture. The word of God will change your life. It'll bring power to situations that seem hopeless. It'll bring life to situations that seem dead and over and not producing any fruit. The word of God has the power to change lives forever. So I want to read this psalm because it has impacted me in a deep way. And I hope it does for you too. And I hope to provide some it kind of linking everything together for you too. So Psalm 23, it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In wrapping up my message, I want to explain to you why Jesus used the imagery of shepherd so often. It is seen throughout the Bible. I'm going to dig a little bit more into this because it is repetitive in the Bible. Sheep, shepherd, it is used a lot. 
So why use this imagery? What is the importance behind it? I'm just gonna give you a little bit of information to provide some clarity. Number one, sheep were prized possessions. In fact, they were very, very valuable to shepherds. Incredibly valued, valuable to shepherds. If you had sheep, that was valued. You, the sheep were very much valued. Number two, sheep need a leader. They go in the direction of the leader. They hear the shepherd's voice. In fact, they learn it very quickly and very easily. It doesn't take them long at all to hear their shepherd's voice, to know what it sounds like, and to gently, simply follow. Amazing, right? Think about us as the flock, as sheep. Incredible, right? You know what's interesting is they can't get up without their shepherd. I found this kind of funny. But it's kind of interesting too. When sheep fall over, like on their backs, they can't get up on their own. They literally call or cry out for their shepherd to come help them until their shepherd picks them up, sometimes having to put them on their back and carry them home. Think about that. Have you ever felt like you fall on your back and help, I fall and I can't get up? Do you know that you can call on the voice of God, that you can call on the shepherd to pick you up and to carry you home? It's really that simple. It's amazing to me that shepherds do this. Sheep are not meant to carry any burdens. They're not animals that throw burdens other or weight on their back and carry them like donkeys and other animals that carry things. Sheep were never meant for those purposes. They were gentle animals, very prized possessions. They were not created to carry burdens on their own by themselves. And lastly, they don't do very well when they get lost from their flock, from their pack. They don't do well alone. They need a group of people and a shepherd to be with them, to help them. Oh, and one more thing I almost forgot. Shepherds, oh, no, we're not gonna get there yet. Oh, we're gonna get there in just a little bit. Sorry about that. So sheep do not do well on their own. They need a flock. In fact, when they get lost from their flock, it can end up killing them. It's pretty crazy, right? So let's take a look at the good shepherd. And this is what I was excited about. Why good shepherd? Why is Jesus, why, why is Jesus a good shepherd? Why is God a good shepherd to his sheep, to us? Number one, good shepherds protect. Good shepherds protect their sheep. And that's exactly what God does for us. He protects his sheep. Number two, good shepherds fight off enemies. Remember that how I said that nothing can snatch you out of his hands? Well, that's a good shepherd. The, the shepherds take their sheep and they fight off any enemies that try to come at their sheep. In fact, they are really protective of their flock. They're looking, they're on the lookout all the time, eyes everywhere to protect their flock. Amazing, right? Makes me think about God. Another interesting fact is that shepherds will search for the one lost sheep. In fact, he knows every single sheep that he has. I'm saying sheep a whole lot. I know that. And that's awesome. But... He will go and look for the one lost sheep. He knows when that sheep is missing. And he will leave all the other protected sheep together to go search for that one lost sheep. He also binds up the wounds of the sheep. When they get hurt, when they get wounded, he fixes them. He takes care of them. Sometimes shepherds, good shepherds, will take the sheep back to the flock and the other sheep will lick the wounds of the lost or hurt sheep. Pretty powerful, right? In a sense of being there for one another and helping each other out. And lastly, the good shepherd will pick up the sheep on his back to take them back, to take the sheep back. You know, maybe you can relate with some of that today. Maybe you feel like you're the lost sheep away from the flock. Maybe you feel like you've walked away from God or that you don't know, you don't feel very protected, you don't feel like very safe. And maybe we're just overcomplicating this. Maybe it's just as simple 
as our one psalm said at the very beginning, that we kneel before our maker and we say, God, you've got the whole world in your hands. Surely you've got me. Surely you'll protect me. Surely, surely you'll bring me back home. You'll bind up my wounds. You'll, you'll help me. You'll heal me. You'll guide me. It's not as difficult. Do you know if you're a sheep, if you've asked Jesus into your heart, and if you haven't, that's all you have to do is just confess him Lord of your life and you will be saved. If you've done that, the Bible says that you can hear his voice. It's not so difficult. Sheep hear their shepherd's voice pretty quickly. They learn it. You can hear the voice of God. And maybe you feel like you're a little bit of a goat. You're like, I'm just doing my own thing. I'm going my own way. I'm kind of strong. I want control. So I'm just trying to force my way into everything and be my own God and make my own decisions. And I've got this. Well, maybe this is your time that you can kneel to the maker of the creator of the heavens and earth and say, God, you know what? I need you to be my good shepherd. I cannot do this on my own. I don't want to be the goat. I want you to be the greatest of all time. I don't want to be my own. I want you to lead me and to be my good shepherd. It really might be that simple. Maybe you found yourself dependent on everybody else to make you happy, to bring you peace, or to bring you joy. And now we're in this quarantine and you realize, my goodness, I need God. I want you to know that he loves you so much. He loves you so much and he wants to be your good shepherd. He wants to take care of you. I wanna encourage you and challenge you, just kneel before the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one that created you and say, God, you have the whole world in your hands. You've got me and I submit my life to you. I need your peace. I need you to lead me. I don't wanna lead myself in this. It's that simple. As we wrap up, I want to read this scripture to you one more time. I use Zach's study logos Bible. It's amazing. And I took Psalm 23. And it's incredible when you kind of go back and when you get the original Hebrew and Greek, it makes the word of God come alive in a different way, in a unique way. And once I actually put the words, the definition, the understanding of what these words meant into this scripture, I was like, whoa, our church family needs to hear this and feel this like I am. Like, this is incredible. I want to read Psalm, um, Psalm 23 to you, and I pray that it comes alive in your heart today, that something that I speak right now just jumps out at you, and you have the understanding that you have the creator of the, ma- the heavens and the earth on your side and with you. It's powerful to change your life. All right, you ready for this? I'm excited. So with the right definitions, the right words, the Hebrew words, I want to read this scripture to you. The Lord is my provider, guide, and shield. I shall not be inadequate in amount. He makes me recline and rest in green pastures. He leads me beside calm waters that have no wind or waves. He brings back my mind, will, and emotions to their original intent and position. He takes me and guides me into a way of moral standard for his name's sake. Listen to this. Even though I walk through a deep depression in a valley caused by a dark shadow, I will not be afraid of harm or destruction. For you are with me. Your rod and your strong staff that aids me as I walk alleviates sorrow and distress. You arrange and put in order a table before me in front of those against me. You bless my head with oil. My cup overflows. Only goodness and unfailing love shall pursue me all the days of my life, and I shall live in the house of the Lord forever. Wow. Those are powerful words. That is the power of the word of God. Do you know that we don't just teach this every week just to preach or just to share? We know that when you have the understanding 
that even though you walk through a deep depression caused by a dark shadow, that you have a God that says, I want to be with you. I want to take care of you. I want to hold you. I want to aid you in walking through this and you will make it out on the other side. He will help you alleviate sorrow and distress. It's amazing. And that's the God that we serve. We're not just doing this because it's great. We're doing this because this is the power and the good news of the word of God. When you understand this, it begins to change you. When you understand, like Zach's been preaching, the goodness and the love of the Father, you begin to see that he's got the whole world in his hands, that he's a loving God, a caring God. And yeah, even though shepherds may correct a little bit and keep you in line, it's not to harm you and to hurt you. It's because he loves you and he wants what's best for you. And just like the Psalm said, he is our provider, our guide, and our shield. I want to pray with you today that even as you walk through the unknown, even as we face all that we're facing right now, that God is with you, that he has a plan for you, and that he holds you right in the palm of his hands. Everything is going to be okay. We love you so much. Can I pray with you today? And whenever I pray, if you feel like kneeling, if you feel like getting before God, or maybe you just feel like closing your eyes or putting your hand on your heart, do that with me today as I pray for you. Father God, I thank you for every single person that is listening to this, God. From all over, Lord, I just lift them up to you, Lord, and I pray that even as I'm praying right now, they feel your presence and your peace fill up the room that they're in. Lord, I pray that they have the understanding that you have the whole world in your hands, that you're a good God, that you will take care of us, that you will lead us through this. God, I pray that we just submit our ways to yours. God, we want to be sheep that hear your voice, that gently follow you, that don't push our ways down to get to what we want, but that we truly trust in the good shepherd to take us to where we need to be. I thank you for putting us on your shoulders when we need to be out of a valley, that you bind up our wounds, God. In fact, people that are listening right now, where they have hurts and pains and failures, God, where they feel like they don't know what else to do, I thank you that you're our good shepherd and you bind up our wounds you help us walk through the valley and not only walk through there but make it out stronger on the other side Lord we thank you for what you're gonna do we thank you that you've got the whole world in your hands in Jesus name we pray amen amen Hill City I love you so much we will see you next week what a powerful message today Lauren thank you so much you've done such a tremendous job and you know, just as we prayed in the beginning, our heart is truly filled with hope today. Hey, you know, we don't want you to go through life alone. If you're here today and you are alone, you know you can join a Zoom group. We've got a new launching of Zoom groups happening May 10th, and there are even some Zoom groups that you might be able to jump in on right now. Go to hillcitypgh.com for all of your next steps, but we don't wanna just talk about next steps into our church. We wanna talk about next steps into the heart of God. And so you can get a Bible, you can jump in a Bible study, you could come back for church. Come on, we love you and we're just so thankful that you decided to spend your day with us today thank you so much hill city we'll see you next week we love you guys so very much see you soon